Hello, nature lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today's episode is all about biomes, what they are, and where do we find them. So a biome is really just a collection of similar ecosystems. And what defines an ecosystem? Mostly climate. So it's similar climates, and that climate actually will uh, dictate kind of specific kind of plants and plant patterns. So you got this wispy kind of plant in this desert, but in a different desert, different part of the world, we still have these wispy kind of plants. You see that with forests and everything. So how many kind of biomes are there? Well, there's six major categories. So you know forest, you know desert, you know grasslands, but there's also fresh water, there's marine, which is ocean, and then you've got tundra or alpine, you know. Now within that mix, you have these subtypes, and I would pause this and write all these down, but you have these subtypes of biomes. So for example, with fresh water, you have swamps, and you have the bottom of lakes, and you have rivers, and you have ponds, with deserts, you got cold deserts, you got hot deserts. With tundra, you've also got the Arctic and you've got tops of mountains. So all these different biomes, what determines what they are? The climate and the terrain. That's the two things. So what's terrain? Terrain, that's the actual physical features of the geography of a place. For example, the Ozarks, besides being beautiful, is very hilly. The, the Oregon coast is really rocky and the continental shelf of the ocean drops very steeply. So these three things compose a place's terrain, and specifically it's slope and aspect and altitude. And slope is how gradual or steep it is, aspect is kind of the sun on it, and the uh, altitude is, is how high from sea level. And these things will determine how the wind blows, how much water evaporates, how much sunlight will reflect. So this is getting a certain, the aspect of this slope is a certain amount of sunlight at a certain time of day. This hillside, the aspect of it is that it's windy and it prevents large plant growth. Now climate, you're probably a little more familiar with and what determines that? Weather patterns, seasons, um, kind of the extremes in weather, storms, but the really big two are the temperature and the amount of precipitation. Those are the two things that really define the climate and area. So, if you noticed on that map, it was red in the middle, and it got colder as you went away. Why is that? Well, if you notice here, all the sun is hitting straight on at the equator, but up top, it's kind of hitting at an angle, right? And a lot of it's not even really hitting it, or barely hitting it. And so that actually means less sunlight's absorbed and less heat. Well, so if all the sun's hitting directly at the equator, why isn't it just crazy hot? Because we've got water to move it around the planet. The water actually takes the energy from the equator, and we spread it around both in ocean currents like the last slide and this slide which are wind currents. Okay, so what about altitude? It seems like if you're up really close, you're closer to the sun, it should be hotter at the top of the mountain, not colder. Well, no, that's the deal is, is up here around 30,000 feet, there's actually less air and there's less air molecules and they're not bumping into each other as much, which means they're moving slower. And we measure temperature by how fast the molecules move, so it's actually cooler. So how does altitude affect the location? Well, it's kind of cool. It turns out that, like right here at the equator, it's really uh, hot in grassland, but as we move up in altitude, the top of Kilimanjaro, it gets cold in Arctic. It's just like moving up the latitude on the planet. It starts hot at the equator, cold at the poles. So why did temperature and precipitation define an ecosystem? Because they are the main factors that define photosynthesis, okay? And they also, the cool thing about temperature is it really affects evaporation. And evaporation and precipitation together make this thing called a PE ratio, precipitation divided by evaporation. The closer to the one that ratio is, the more good soil you have, which allows for more growth. And so grassland and savanna have it close to one. But when the ratio is greater than one, that indicates you got a lot of rain, you got a lot of snow, which actually causes a lot of those nutrients to go down in the soil and only things with really deep roots can grow there. Trees, some grasses, but mostly trees. But if the ratio is above one, that means we have a whole bunch of evaporation and it actually pulls all these salts in the soil to the surface and it just almost kills all plant growth, which is your whole problem in deserts. Okay, but I know I've told you that really it's carbon dioxide and water that make a plant, so why does soil even matter? Well, if you remember, I said glucose can make all these other molecules the plant needs. Well, it needs nitrogen, it needs phosphorus, it needs magnesium to put together to make those other molecules, and that comes from the soil. 
And now remember that the three big things that define a biome are the sunlight, the precipitation, and the temperature. Okay? And those get mixed in different ratios, and those different ratios define what the biome is. Okay? Now, where what determines what that ratio of sunlight and water and temperature is, it's the latitude on the globe and or the altitude of the place on the globe. And that's really the big things to remember about biomes. So I hope that helps you understand what biomes are and where and why we find them where we do. If you have a question, let me know. Otherwise, peace out, homie. Panda bear.